we're just going to start right in. This is going to be just a sad bone set. Uh, this song that I'm going to play actually is one that I never thought I would play live. And I realized last night as I was figuring out if I still knew how to play it that I haven't played or sung it the whole way through uh, in five years since the night that I wrote it. And if you know, you know. And if you don't, your mental health is probably a lot better than everybody else. Who knows? Call all those you left out in the cold. They won't be back soon. Place your bets that you'll end up alone, just like you all. was then. And uh, that's, uh, you know, it's progress for everybody. Emotional experience for everybody in this room. Um, there's like 5,000 people in this venue right now. We're not showing them because it's not like COVID compliant. And um, I'm just kidding. There's like four people here. And I'm pretty sure they all hate me. But the funniest part is that they're recording this so they can't laugh at any of my jokes. So my insecurities are going to just like get deeper and worse throughout the, um, anyways, this is a song that's not released. <laughs>
Because somehow it was all my fault Even though it stemmed from your bad call And I don't want to call you out For treating me like it's stupid When I want to tell you how My heart and brain are both up in nooses And I don't want to be the one Who writes it off with these excuses Cause that would turn with you in your house but I don't want to be the one you realize was a wasted detour when you would have rather been on the first plane out of Detroit and I don't want to be the one who turns your heart to stone in pieces maybe I should So this is the point in the set where normally at least one person would be crying. Um, and I think that I might have to be the one who does that. So God bless waterproof mascara. Um, I guess that's all I have to say. Uh, should I just act like I'm talking to an audience? I, I believe in firmly breaking down the veil. Uh, I had a record that came out in uh, February called Pushback. And I'm not going to play a lot of the songs from that record because I very specifically feel like um, the energy that they carry and the part of my life that that record speaks to is heavily influenced by being on tour, having a live band with me, and having that community, which effectively saved me and has kept me going for several years. So I feel like it is unfair and it won't do those songs justice to play them. We'll get, we'll get, we'll get some of them in here. However, I'm not going to play an 80s pop song on an acoustic guitar because I'm not that cool and I'm not that talented. And I wish that I could be, but I don't work hard enough, so it's not going to happen. So we're going to play some old songs instead. The song's about drinking in my basement by myself. Choose. 
counts as another person and it's not COVID compliant anyways I'd like to take my secret habit throw it down the rabbit hole I was sober a few years but I guess the beers just sort of came with coming home and it tasted far too sweet when they brought the color back my cheeks after my heart froze and it's easy to get away with whatever when you're when you're always alone guy we save my issue it's funny now that i'm uh you know playing that song I had a lot of people who were like, oh, I listened to it so much during the pandemic. And I didn't, I didn't get it, I didn't understand. And then I realized the whole thing is about being by yourself. So it does make a lot of sense. Um, we're gonna play a new song from uh, the record. It's a... This song's called That's All. It's a dance song, but not today. <laughs> just completely zo uh, zone out and I have this very intrusive thought that I can't get rid of where I don't know where I'll be doing something important where I really need to focus and it's not from anxiety it's actually kind of a pleasant thought but I'm just like I wonder what my cat's doing right now and I don't know if that happens to anybody else where you're just like oh you know you're at work or you're ringing out a customer or you're avoiding somebody in a local grocery store because they're not wearing a mask and they're looking at you like an idiot because you do have one off because you care about other people and then suddenly you're just like I wonder what my cat's doing right now. 
Um, anyways, um, the song comes with a trigger warning, um, specifically uh, for survivors of sexual assault or abusive relationships, which I normally say in a live show setting. And I will encourage people to open up and share their stories and talk to us at the merch table if they're comfortable doing so. Um, this is on the internet. So some of that community is lacking, but I still think we have an amazing opportunity to embrace that community um, online. I haven't figured out how to do it yet, but we'll get there. I tried to use 
I have, uh, I have lots of fun memories from shows, but the first time that I played that song in Columbus, um, way, way, way back, many years ago, because I'm elderly, and this project, a, a four or five-year-old project when you're a band, especially if you've been in the music scene for a long time, that's automatically like, you've been in a band for 20 years. If you can make it past like the first two years, you're just like, you're old. You're old. I'm basically Aerosmith now. That's where I'm at. Um, except I guess I don't really have a band because I didn't want to have to start one. So I said, hey, I'm going to do this alone. And the most amazing thing that I learned by deciding to do something alone is that I literally can't do anything by myself. Um, and playing that song in Columbus and hearing everybody sing that refrain back. Uh, we stopped playing music. There were no drums. There was no guitar. It was nothing. It was just a crowd full of people sharing a similar um, you know, feeling of discontent and, and discomfort and a struggle. And even though they were all different and nobody knew everybody in that room, they could connect on something. And I realized in that moment, I need people. And I needed everybody in that room more than they could ever need me or anything that I do. Um, um, I'm gonna try to play the song away. I've never played it before, so. <laughs> uh, this, this song is, usually for all the single people in the house, but this time it's specifically for all the gals, the gays, and the days. This is no lover, but sad. I don't wanna say I, I just wanna say we, we make a great team and teamwork is good. It's good enough for me and mediocrity is something I've been trying so hard lately to avoid And by avoiding conversations that lead to confrontation While well, confronting my fears of a life and failing hard While well, hardly making progress as progressing is a process I'm processing everything that I've been through so far away I've been so far away It's just that romance seems like I'm mean to an end. Maybe I don't need a lover. I just need the bread. I carried my weight on when my back was sore. I don't need a lover. I don't need a lover. I said I don't need a lover. So I don't need anyone. And if I came back, would it be like back then? Then we could get back to a place that's better than it has. The ladies in your life, lie, 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 lie. I'll get it when the time's right. It's my life, but it doesn't look like it. Lie, 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 lie. I don't want it. Romance seems like a means to an end. Maybe I don't need a lover. I just need the bread. I carried my weight. Oh, when my back was sore. Thank you. 
but he does not speak. This song's about being entirely fraudulent. <clears throat> Sorry you caught me at a bad time. See, I thought tonight I might be dying. Nobody told me you could get up and just try again. I'm not trying to be anxious. Sorry, I swear she didn't mean that Her heart is pure and she is perfect She can carry all the weight of your world on her back I don't deserve the high appraisals For pretending that I'm safe Thanks for playing on that song and singing on that song and recording that song in the record. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, you can go now. Okay. We're done. We're done. I hate that guy. I thought we like went on this tour together one time. Is he gone? Yeah, he's gone. We went on tour together. He didn't talk to me the whole time. Like, what? You know what I mean? What it? <clears throat> My brain's shutting off. So... That thing I said about anxiety, does anybody else in here, you don't, you, we could all like close our eyes and you can answer or whatever. Does anybody else uh, take medication for anxiety? 
maybe, or is Kinsey? You don't have to raise your hands. Of those people, I saw some of you twitch a little bit. Um, like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't do it. Uh, first of all, the conversation around surrounding that should be totally normalized. But I do take medication for anxiety, and I did not take it today, which I have mentioned several times. But I have this thing called obsessive compulsive personality disorder, um, and what happens is my my brain gets stuck in these gears essentially when I start something with the intent of finishing it um and if I have a thought or something that I want to do and then I can't do it it just it's kind of like my brain is like grinding on itself and it triggers anxiety attacks so that's what I'm dealing with today and it's um it's really fun uh it's not fun but being able to still um you know step outside of your comfort zone be around people especially for the first time in like a year um and realize that, you know, at the end of the day, I'm still gonna have moments where my brain was not kind to me and I'm, you know, struggling with my mental health issues, but I'll wake up tomorrow and I'll be like, oh, I did that. So the next time that I'm stuck uh, at home crying in my bed because I don't wanna get up because I don't wanna do whatever that day is, even if I don't even have anything to do, I just don't wanna move. I don't wanna take my cat off of my lap and have to exist that day. It's every experience where we do that, we get to look back and be like, oh, wait a second, I can do that. And I did. Mm. This is not, is not the voice I thought. my mind and you know what we're just gonna keep going but I guess you can't stay way up on that pedestal forever with your head so far in the clouds you're bound to see bad weather but damn honey have you seen the view from up here we're gonna have a real clarity moment um singing songs about looking into the future and what you want for yourself and not being able to get it because you struggle with anxiety while having a very anxiety-driven moment. It's the shit that people don't see. It doesn't go on the internet. It doesn't go on our feeds. It doesn't go on Twitter. It doesn't go anywhere, but it should. It should exist in the world and it makes people uncomfortable and it's not fun and this is supposed to be like a fun time that we're all having but can can we just break down that barrier and admit that everybody's had a really fucking hard year that we're all in no, I don't know a single person who has woken up in the past month and been like I'm in an awesome place you know what I mean and I think the reason I'm having a hard time playing the song is because it's it's from a time when everything seemed I'm gonna cry, but it's fine, because crying is so fucking normal. It, it's from a time when everything seemed so hopeful, and everyone was so optimistic, and I hate that just because things are starting to get better for a lot of people, um, and we, we see optimism and we see hope, it's, it's like we're falling back into the cycle where everybody is supposed to repress the pain that they're feeling because stuff is getting better. And that's not okay. That's not where we should be. We should be at a point where people are like, wow, we all, as the, literally the entire world, experienced the same kind of pain in unison. And we're just, I don't know. I have thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts. And you know what? Maybe that's, maybe we don't end it on a song. Maybe that's where that set ends. It's, it's an open ending. It's an incomplete song it's the half finished cycle of whatever getting out of this pandemic is and whatever connecting starts to look like because i don't have the answers and i don't have the end of the song um but i do have a lot of feelings and a lot of uh, hope that we are going to get to a better place that something good is coming um but we have to accept all of the bad first to be able to really embrace it you know Thank you.
So let's just do that. Let's just uh, let's just make that the end. Let's just be. Like, I'm Jenny Bones. I have a lot of feelings. Goodbye forever. <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm Quay Slane for ACRN Media, and I'm here with Kelsey of Jetty Bones, um, and I have some very pressing questions for you. Um, first off, what's your stance on middle school fitness tests? Okay, well, my stepdad actually was not a gym teacher, but a physical education instructor for elementary school. So... I don't know. I think kind of think they're bullshit. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> um, and I, they're a little ableist, too. If you... If you want to be honest um and that's not a cool thing um i did have to take all of them in elementary school not in middle school um i did pass the presidential fitness test but he let me um make sure i could do all the extra jumping jacks after school so i kind of feel like i cheated like my privilege was definitely showing in that circumstance but in middle school stop like a lot of people are just figuring out who they are. They feel uncomfortable. They don't fit in their bodies. Don't make them run in front of other people and time it. That's wrong. Hmm. Um, any musical influences or like songs that you're just super super into right now? Um, yes, there is a a song called "Immune" by. I'm gonna cheat. I'm actually gonna look it up on my phone because okay. I have a tendency to save songs. Everything that I've done today is going to require so much editing. Okay, it is, but I just don't want to get this artist's name wrong. Um, their name is Jensen McRae. I say they because I'm unsure of uh, the artist's pronouns, but it's called Immune. And there's a line in it that says, as we leave, I turn to you, ask how's it feel to be immune? And it's about getting vaccinated. And I, the first time I heard it, I just started, I started crying because, you know, it's, it's relatable. It's honest. It's real. But she's making a that circumstance i don't know what their pronouns are i just want to like cut that part out i'm pretty sure this artist's pronouns are she her but i don't know and i never want to like misgender somebody Mm -hmm. so um but yeah immune by jensen mcray is awesome um what's your songwriting process like um, usually I start having an anxiety attack and to ground myself, I will, uh, either start playing an instrument or kind of humming a melody, coming up with some lyrics. I definitely use it as an outlet. Um, so generally I'll come up with either music or melody first, build around that just a very simple skeletal idea, and then go in and start adding, you know, synth, uh, additional guitars, extra instrumentation, and then take it to the studio from there. So pretty much um a skeleton to get it out and then we go then she grows into a human <laughs> okay um real big one here what's your favorite type of dog teacup pomeranians specifically the black ones that have pink tongues okay. they're so cute i will cry if i see one in real life ever straight up <laughs> <laughs> um oh okay does releasing a project as an album as opposed to an ep feel any different I think it did. I this time, which is it's the only time I've ever done it. Um, it felt like I had a really awesome opportunity to say what I wanted to say in a complete package, um, with more detail, I guess. But I also realized I'm remarking on a story that's not over yet. So I'm. It's cool to have a debut record out after being a musician for so long. But I'm not opposed to releasing more EPs or even just singles in the future. I think the story's ever growing. So let's just. Let's grow with it. Grow with it. Flow with it. I'm so tired. This is so human. I love it. Um, oh, okay. What's your COVID experience been like just in terms of your artistry? Sad. Um, I, I did get a lot of writing done, but I was kind of in a box already having this record done. So the record pushback came, um, was actually recorded at the end of January in 2020. So I was sitting on that record for the entire pandemic thinking it was going to come out last summer. It got... No pun intended. I just don't know how else to phrase it. Pushed back (laughs) to February of 2021. Um, I felt like I wasn't allowed to write anything. And I didn't want to get over ideas before it was time for something new. Um, I definitely miss touring. Um, I feel feel disconnected from a world that 
I was waiting so long to be a part of. I know I'm not the only one who feels like that, though. I think when we have that back, we're all going to be a little bit more in touch with who we are as people and as artists, though. Mm -hmm. I think you said that, like, really well. That was really well phrased. Um, oh. <laughs> um. Oh. Oh, yeah, the Ohio's coming yep. out. I'm not even from here. Y'all have been I'm so sorry. There. I'm so sorry. Um, okay, your music videos, I watched a few of them. They're really, really, really well produced. And I was wondering um, just what a typical shoot is like and how long they usually take to put together because they're so beautiful. Okay, so it's very different depending on which video. So for this record, we actually shot the music video for Taking Up Space and That's All within three days. All the sets, everything. Um, I had Lindsay Burns is my creative director now. So she had Danny Oaken come and we just knocked these videos out. So that was like crazy. But it's just quick. Um, a lot of stuff we had to figure out on the spot because we filmed them at my house during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, the last video for nothing, that one was filmed with one of my best friends, Mark. He uh, runs Real Bear Media. That's his company. That was uh, very different because I just said, Mark, I trust you. You get my creative vision. You had this idea when you heard the demo of this song, like, let's do it. And then I had to fly to L.A. for that. And it was, um, I think, like a 16-hour day of shooting i think by the time i got home from shooting we we did all of that in one day all that video and then by the time that i got back to um mark and his partner's house that night i had to get up and get on a flight in like two hours after that it was, it was crazy um which that is not necessarily about the video but all of that happened so quickly because i was traveling in the pandemic so it had to be fast i had to get in and get out where if my traveling happened i'm going on a tangent i'm so sorry no, I mean, I'm oh, so sorry. It's, all, it's all related. <laughs> ah! uh, um, but yeah, traveling during a pandemic has been crazy. I think that plays in the last question, too, about, you know, things you can and like can't do. But for that video shoot specifically, again, had to be one day because I had to get there. I had to get out where if I had contracted uh, COVID while traveling, I wouldn't be contagious in that time frame. Mm. So I and then had to quarantine before and after. So I don't know if it'll be different in the future. There's a way simpler answer to that question that you just asked me. No, long answers are good. I'm just That's... tired. <laughs> Y'all ever just feel like you've been tired since March of 2019? Not even 2020. All the time. <sighs> yeah, I just need to... Um, I wish sometimes that I could like close my eyes and then like for as long as they're closed, just have everything stop. But um, unfortunately, that's not the world we live in. No so works. I'm going to be honest. I think that a lot, too. Um, <laughs> but I struggle with a lot of pretty serious mental health issues that I'm very open about because I think that's one thing. You know, having people aware of it keeps me accountable. Mm -hmm. um, whenever I express the exact same thing that you express to me to somebody else, they get really concerned about me. But it's not. I mean, sometimes wanting everything to just pause, stop for a while, like, that's okay. It's. Mm -hmm. I think that's normal. We don't. But it's a warning sign as well. <laughs> uh, keep that in are mind. you are you doing okay? Yeah, I'm chilling. You sure? Yeah. Okay, just checking. If you need to talk later, just hit me up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what does it feel to perform live ish, I guess? So I cried on stage. I had an anxiety attack. Um it's it's, it's different when there's not a room full of people who all are, you know, it, it, there's these waves and kind of an ebb and flow of emotion that is existing between a, a mass of people. And when everyone's listening to the same song, a lot of the times their emotions kind of move with it and progress the same way. So when you're on stage and you're putting together a set to create that movement in people, it's, it's totally different than... Um, you know, like filming a set. And I, the only reason I will play, this is going to make me sound bad. This makes me sound like a bad person. The only reason I will do any sort of like live streams or sets are because there are people who've supported this project for a long time that really want that. Hmm. But to me, I have a really hard time with them because as stupid as this sounds, they feel very performative. 
they feel very self-indulgent for some reason. Like, I'm just doing it for me. And the whole reason I tour is, is for other people. I play those shows to forge a connection with people. And it, I, I'm just having a hard time accepting that I can do that through a screen, you know, through the internet. Because um, I don't see it happening. But instant gratification is an issue with our, uh, well, our entire society, honestly, now. But I'll get there. I'll get there. Um, it, it does feel cool. I was really excited. I I think it'll be something good. I'm still just adjusting. I haven't really done it much, but mm-hmm. I cried. <laughs> I cried. Okay, this one's maybe a little bit easier, but probably harder. Um, what's your favorite simple machine? My favorite simple machine? Yep. Pulley. Pulley, okay. It's <laughs> a good one. Um <laughs> I fuck with a pulley, I'm just saying. Pulleys are really good. I'm um I'm a lever guy myself, I think. Mm. Wait, isn't an incline, like a ramp, is basically a simple machine, isn't it? Yeah. I think actually I probably like that one because hauling gear up steps, but having a pulley system, I like the idea of standing on the ground, having a pulley attached to like my feet and just being like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you understand what I mean by, Foom. yeah, <laughs> it's a, it's a goal of mine. So someday. Um, and I think that's all I have. So thank you so much for coming out and playing for us. I really, really, really appreciate it. And thanks for talking to me. Um, and is there anything you want to plug or shout out while you're here? Um, yeah, actually I will. Um, I've had a lot of people, this is the only like self promotion I'll do. Obviously had a new record that came out February 26th. It's called pushback on rise records. Um, pretty excited about that, but the story is kind of just starting. Um, a lot of people have asked, like, what's a good way that you can support musicians who aren't touring right now other than Bandcamp Friday, where you can buy stuff for people with no fee from the site, uh, like merch, songs, whatever, and Bandcamp doesn't take a fee. I don't have a Bandcamp, so a lot of people have been asking me, you know, is there anything they can do for this project specifically? So I started a Patreon Oh, it's just patreon.com slash jettybones, where right now I'm currently doing a deep dive series talking about each song on the record, what its concept is, the writing process. Um, so it's going through week by week a different song. Uh, you can pledge for literally a dollar if you want to support it. But that's kind of the journey that I'm on right now to forge a really intentional community around this project since we can't tour. Okay, sounds good. Um, Thanks again. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being so nice. <laughs> Everybody's so nice.